A bear market is a time of great uncertainty for investors. The stock markets are down by at least 20% from its all-time high. There is a lot of pessimism about the future. There are whispers of a recession. People are being laid off. Companies are postponing projects. Commodity prices are going up, etc. As a result of all this, many investors panic and start pruning down their equity holdings, which is something that is happening in India as well. Although this time, it's the foreign investors who have turned towards the exit. Now, what might come as a surprise to many is that the Indian indices, the Sensex and Nifty, have seen not one, not two, not three, but eight such 20% drops in these last 25 years. That's one big fall of 20% every three years. So in this video, we shall look at some data and some specific strategies that retail investors like you and me can employ to better survive this bear market period. Let's begin. If you've been investing for some time now, surely you'll agree with me that every asset class has some degree of volatility. Equities, bonds, gold, crypto, real estate, metals, everything, which also includes your friendly neighborhood bank fixed deposit as well, which has seen interest rates range from 4 to 9% over the past decade. In fact, the last three decades of data shows us that equities tend to massively outperform debt instruments and gold, with a rupee invested in the Sensex multiplying to 68 times in the last 32 years, giving us a CAGR of 14.1%. In the same period, the price of gold went up by 20x, while bonds grew at a more sedate 14 times, giving equities a substantial lead in terms of long-term wealth creation. Of course, we cannot deny the fact that equity investments come with high volatility and drawdowns, which is where the risk tolerance level of an investor comes into play. And if that part is taken care of, then point blank stocks remain one of the best long-term investment options and is likely to generate returns in excess of other asset classes in spite of some smaller periods of negative returns like what we are seeing now. Bear markets are more common than what one assumes. For instance, the Indian stock markets have seen eight different 20% drops in the last 25 years, so that's one in three years. Likewise, the US markets, and more specifically, the S&P 500 index, has seen 26 bear markets since 1928, which incidentally also comes close to a one in three year scenario. But if the stock markets face a bear market, then what it also means is that there has been an equal number of bull markets and pleasantly, what has happened is that the value of stocks have gone up at a greater pace in those bull markets as compared to the falls in the bear market. So in numbers, the US data shows that stocks have lost an average of 36% in a bear market, and by contrast, they have gained an average of 114% during a bull market. Nevertheless, we agree that a bear market is always a difficult time for investors, and also leads to a panic situation with a number of investors selling their equity holdings at rock bottom prices, often incurring big losses in their portfolio. We have seen this all the time and particularly in those tough periods of 2001, in 2008, 2011, 2016, definitely in 2020. And we are seeing it a bit now in 2022, although it's mostly the foreign investors who are selling. But having said this, a sin that is bigger than exiting the stock markets is one's failure to get back into it. And that's because post the collapses of 2001, 2008 and 2020, the stock markets have also witnessed one of the strongest bull markets in its history. In fact, I once heard some experts saying in a business news channel that if one were to remain 100% invested in stocks as the market crosses the 20% drop mark, then the investor is likely to be gloriously rewarded over the next three years, even if the market takes a little time to bottom out. This statement surely got me curious, and here's what our research on this shows. So in this century, the Nifty first dropped by 20% from an all-time high in the year 2000 in the month of September. The Nifty continued to fall from there, 
and eventually reached an all-time low in September of 2001 with the Nifty having fallen by a good 45% from its all-time highs. However, since it's next to impossible to time the market, let's say I invest some money for the very first time when the Nifty crosses that 20% mark. So that's the month of September in the year 2000. Now, when we observe the fate of this investment after three years, we see that it has given me a CAGR of 3.7%, which I really can't count as being a glorious reward for my patients. But when the same observation is done after five years, we see that my patience has been more than rewarded with the Nifty 50 delivering a CAGR of 15.4% and that's without counting dividends. Now, when we extend this three-year, five-year observation into other beer market periods, the general assessment has been rather positive with the 2011 and 2016 dips showing remarkable results. The only exception to this was the 2008 global financial crisis which did too much of damage to the Indian and the world economies, which took some more time for the markets to wriggle out of. Nevertheless, the argument laid out does have some merits and seems to support the argument that one should hold on tight during difficult times, or as Batman would say, the night is darkest before the dawn. The Nifty delivered returns of 12% in 2019, almost 15% in 2020, and a whopping 24% in 2021. In other words, the decade-old bull run had sufficiently corrupted the Indian equity investors' expectation, and it was only fair that the year 2022 gave up some of those gains. Now, in a beer market, one cannot and should not expect double-digit returns from equities. In fact, one should expect low or negative returns in that period and should be ready to smartly balance the boat with other asset classes like bonds, goals, and fixed deposits which have a low correlation to equities. In addition to return expectations, investors should also be wary of their emotions, which in turn plays a rather large part in guiding one's behavior. For instance, to see the equity markets in India fall by 20% can quickly overshadow the fact that the index has always returned back to their all-time highs and have then continued its march upwards, offering a CAGR of 13 to 14% in the long term. Investors who have doubts in the year 2022 should go back and examine the stock market's resurgence in 1992, 2001, 2004, 2008, 2011, and many other years, with the Nifty and Sensex continually reaching new all-time highs. So adjust your expectations for the immediate term, but more importantly, keep your emotions in check and rely on the history of market cycles to guide you through the future. While one cannot control the direction of the stock markets, there are still a number of areas that we can influence. In fact, there are three things you need to particularly manage when it comes to surviving a beer market. The first tip is not to dwell on your past actions or inactions. You see, investors often blame themselves not for the stock market fall, but for not reading the signs and moving some part of their portfolio out of equities. From my own experience, I can tell you that this is easier said than done, as downward movements often occur quite rapidly and it may not always be possible to take the right action at the right time. So instead of pondering over what could have been done or what should have been done in hindsight, it is advisable that investors, instead of stirring up feelings of regret, anxiety, and panic, should try to be more forward-looking. And that's where the forward-looking second tip comes in, that is, improve one's portfolio allocation, which is nothing but the way your money is kept across different asset classes like stocks, bonds, gold, property, cash, crypto, etc. It's a point we've made too many times on this YouTube channel and with relevant data, but if you want a refresher, then don't forget to watch this video whose link I have attached in the description of this video. The fact is having a strategic or tactical asset allocation will ensure that the volatility in your portfolio is manageable and with good downside protection. The third tip and a very important one is for you to rebalance your portfolio from time to time. Now, there need not be a particular event that triggers a rebalancing and instead rebalancing should be done at specified intervals, irrespective of the market being high, low, or flat. 
as a risk management technique, rebalancing ensures that your portfolio moves in line with your goals. And if asset allocation and rebalancing is new to you, then we highly recommend you explore our genius offering, which does all this for you and aims to offer a better risk adjusted return for its investors. Beer markets tend to be short lived. In India, the average length of a beer market is about eight months, while a bull market lasts much longer, averaging about two and a half to three years. Likewise, if you look at the US markets and its 92 year history, beer markets have comprised only 20 of those years, which means equity investments have been increasing 78% of the time. Which effectively means that even if the stock markets are in a beer phase, the companies that comprise the stock market are still innovating, still manufacturing, and they continue to sell their products and services, generating sales, cash flows, and profits for themselves. So essentially, they are continually creating wealth, and in a few months when the beer market subsides, that wealth will start getting reflected in the shareholders' portfolio statements as well. A related advice here for investors is for them to stay away from the gloom and doom news that often comes up during beer market periods. And that's because the media will continually remind investors with words like recession, stagflation, bankruptcies, fiscal deficit, unemployment, etc. However, I am not suggesting that one digs a hole in the sand and buries one's neck to such news, but one needs to distinguish between what's relevant and what's merely noise, which will be of prime importance here. In my opinion, investors would do well to focus on the core indicators like valuations, industry growth, demand, capacity building, etc., rather than anything and everything that the business channels throw at us. And finally, stick to your financial plan. You see, a good financial plan is one that is built according to your needs and your risk appetite which also includes making allowances for times like these when the stock market is going through a patchy period. These allowances include things like keeping some funds for emergencies, providing a cushion of cash for taking advantage of buying opportunities, and inbuilt flexibility to move from growth stocks to value and defensive stocks, and of course, disciplined rebalancing to keep your goals on target. Now, a financial plan does not need to be complicated and most times it does not even need a financial advisor. In fact, there are just five parts to a good financial plan. Firstly, there is disciplined investing, which can be initiated with a few systematic investment plans or SIPs. Secondly, make sure your investments are diversified across asset classes. That is, it's a multi-asset portfolio like what Genius offers. Thirdly, get smart during beer markets by getting rid of your worst stocks and putting the balanced capital in stronger companies which will now be available at relatively better valuations. Point four, get your asset allocation and rebalancing right. And finally, mind your emotions and don't take any rash decisions like buying or selling too much. A lot of what we have mentioned in these five points are already covered in greater details on our YouTube channel. So if you aren't subscribed to it yet, then kindly do so and also tell your friends about us. So to sum up, the true test of a good financial plan is how it performs in such beer markets. And it is our belief that if you do the steps and the strategies that we have covered in this video, you're likely to end up a lot more satisfied and wealthier than a majority of others who make unplanned haphazard decisions with their money. And with this, we come to the end of this video. If you like the contents of this video, then do press that like button and leave us a comment on how you are preparing to deal with the beer market. Once again, thank you for your time and I look forward to catching up with you next week on another insightful topic. Until then. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.